Hi! It's been, well, barely even a month, I think, since we last talked about Agents of Mayhem. But uh, this is the, the big kickoff. We are going to be streaming every week Agents of Mayhem from now until the game launches. Yep, boy. So we got a lot of stuff to show. Um, but yeah, hi, I'm Josh Stinson. I'm the video editor here at Volition. And today we've got several guests. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Mike Jungluth. I'm lead animator. I'm Ryan McCabe, lead agent designer. I'm Jeffrey Belowski, writer. And then over Skype we have... Hey, I'm Melanie Mignikino, and I am voicing Fortune. Yay! And so yeah, since you're here, uh, this week, to start off, we're going to be streaming all about uh, Fortune, one of the first playable agents in our game that we showed off, like, last year, I believe? Um, mm, that's the three. And mm -hmm. yeah, the majority of our streams are going to be focusing on a different agent. We have 12. Um, we're going to have a couple other streams focusing on different aspects of the game as well, but mostly focusing on the agents because they're like the big gameplay thing because they all play different. They all, you know, have their own different personalities and all this other stuff. Um, so You can say most important. <laughs> the most important one yeah. is Fortune. <laughs> that's why we're starting that's, off there first. Yeah. That's why we start with Fortune. Um, so, yeah, I guess before... So, for these streams, uh, when we're talking about agents, we're going to be uh, beginning with concept art and videos and other stuff showing, like, you know, the, the early stages of the agents and how they came to be. Um, maybe a couple goofy things that happen in the game early on, you know, because that shit happens when you're making video game, you guys. A little bit. Um, Just once. <laughs> Yeah, we mess up once, then everything else is perfect. We're, we're yeah. one and a half times. Okay. Let's be honest. All right. What's the half? We'll, we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so that'll be about the first half of these streams, and the second half will actually go in game, and we'll mess around with them a little bit and change out their loadouts to show you know the different ways they can play and all that. Um, so to start off, we are going to be taking a look at a whole bunch of concept art and a couple of videos. Let's I get this up. All right, so, so really, I think really early concept for Fortune, right? Yeah, this is pretty pretty darn early. A um, little bit. Yeah, her her character in game looks. There are definitely similarities, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but uh, a bit different, especially coloring wise. And what was interesting is we went through uh, quite a few iterations of concept art like this, trying to nail down exactly what we wanted each agent to look like, what they're, what they look like thematically, what mayhem was as an agency, so and, and what it meant to be part of that agency, and it, everybody kind of ended up fitting into uh, the a, a pattern of um, where. Uh, What's the best way to put it? <laughs> I'm trying to think of the best way to, to, to explain this. We went through a lot of different looks, and we went more militarized sometimes. Mm, right. um, you know, we went more fantastical, and we had to find a very happy medium um, in between. And it wasn't just about what is this agent's individuality, but what does mayhem mean? Yeah. What does mayhem mean as an agency, like I mentioned? So what, what is Mayhem bringing to each character, and what is each character bringing to their own outfit? Okay. Um, so, obviously this was really early on. Like, how soon, and Melanie, this, tie, this ties in with you too, how soon yeah. do you guys start thinking about voice actors for characters? It's as soon as we have a solid concept for what the character, like, what the character's going to be about, what, what is kind of their... I don't know, it's sort of like, what do we expect the player's going to want to see? In this case, High Tech Pirate was right. one of the starting points. And as soon as we figure out like what sort of background, ethnicity, and voice that we wanted to hear coming from these characters, we send out our casting sheets, and that's where we end up figuring out, once we get all those back, who's, go who's going to kind of fit in our... In who voices what's in our head closest <laughs> or does something new that we didn't think was going to be there right so that's kind of it, it, it's relatively early in the process but not not super super early as early as some of this concept art okay yeah. one yeah. of the the really crazy things with on the vo front was you you do build this this picture in your head fortune was one of the 
first agents we put into game. She was an agent that I chose to work on because I love pirates very, very much. So when she came in as a post-it note, she started off as a post-it note that said, high tech pirate. And we got to pick and choose which agents we were going to do based on the post-it notes. So I was like, and that one's mine. I'm going to be the one that makes fortune. And you start developing this character and we're working on the abilities, what she does in combat. And you get, you start to build this voice in your head of what you think she sounds like based on what writing has come up with for their background. And when we finally got the VO in, the fact that it really matched what I had mm -hmm. built for myself was pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, and, and Melanie, you've been working on this game for a while, right? Because I remember I started working here like two-ish years ago, so the game had been around for... A little bit, I guess. But I remember your voice being one of the first ones that actually popped in the game that was not temp from somebody in the office. Yep. I believe the first time? Yeah. It was February of 15, I think. Wow. February 15. Wow. That's longer time flies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's been a while. I mean, I feel like we just had a session just like not so long ago <laughs> and it's kind of just starting to end now. I mean, we had a rap party. Um, when was it like it was December or something like that? So yeah, it's mm. been a while, but I mean, it didn't feel like a really long time. It kind of just felt like, you know, you see these people and you work with these people, like almost like a family. So it, I was actually really sad when it ended. I know it's a lot of work and you guys are happy to be closing yes. it, but I wanted to keep going. <laughs> Well, since she was, like, the first character that that we were working on to, like, animation-wise, she was it. Like, she was the one that we started with. Right. And so she has had that whole time of every time we wanted something new, it was prove it out on Fortune first. Uh, so, you know, even though... That's, like, in life and, like, in, like, real life, too. Because yeah. Because the test got out on me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> But I mean that's the like that's the thing. It was you know the from the first day I started here, which was uh, what was it? I think that was September of 2014. That concept art already existed. The models hadn't existed yet, mm -hmm. and it was like, all right, uh, let's start doing some tests. Let's figure out how people move. And Fortune was like was my character essentially from the you know pretty much the day I started. So, yeah, like. Literally. I think she was the last person I just did an animation for in the game too. Like just, really? Yeah, it was one of those things. It was like now that. Because the game's been growing, and she had all the stuff, by the end of it, you go, I want to go back and fix that thing from okay. the very beginning, because I did that necessarily mm. before we had everything figured out. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, this is, is this is pretty close, or is her final look in the game, right? I think this is her final look, yeah. because yeah. she went through, like, res, right? she went through yeah. one or two fairly major changes. I think uh, she kind of had one. If you look at like the uh, the cinematic trailer, oh, as well of, as this one here, yeah, this uh, is an extremely <laughs> early shot of this game. This oh, is what boy. it looked like when I first started working here. I yeah. think. Yeah, about. Yeah. What's what's the difference in her? Is she, is she have like. So uh, the differences are, are mostly kind of uh, largely outfit, a little bit in proportion. So uh, here you'll see she's got, like, uh, like in that original concept art, she had sort of the blue top with, like, the, uh, the kind of crisscrossed uh, uh, strings kind of down wedding. in her, this wedding behind her back and yeah. uh, behind her knee pads. Um, her, we also were, like, once we saw it in game, we're like, oh, her legs feel kind of really thin and the knee pads yeah. make it look really big like she's got these like knocky knees so we kind of uh, helped to to widen those out um, and and it was also once we started doing more characters and we said what is the like uh, what is sort of like the stuff that like when you join Mayhem they go here's your outfit and then what are the pieces that an agent looks at and goes ooh I like that and I would never wear that uh, <laughs> and, and then kind of bring in their own style right so the way we kind of look at it is this might have been her outfit uh, before she joined Mayhem, um, and then once she like officially joined Mayhem or whatever, it would be mm -hmm. the outfit that she has now. Also, Glory is ridiculously huge yes. Yes. here yeah. right now too. Really big. If you if you don't know, Fortune hangs out or goes around with Glory, which is her drone. Initially, the idea was well, she's a pirate. Of course, she has a parrot that goes along with her. So we we kind of think of them as a a team that worked really well together, and we'll get into that later on. Yeah. Uh, since, you know, we were talking about how we got Melian pretty 
a while ago to start mm. doing voice work. Melanie, how did you first hear about our game? Was it just through an agent or did somebody else contact you? Yeah, no, I, it, it was really through an agent. And, you know, if you don't know how it works, when you first get a voiceover audition, a lot of times there's code names for the games. Mm -hmm. So you don't really know what you're doing sometimes until even you show up or sometimes even until after you're done. You're like, what mm. was I just in? So <laughs> I really didn't know until I was like kind of in it. Um, I, I forgot there had to be a code name for this one. I'm trying to remember what it was. I feel like I, I used to know it too. Did it Atlas maybe? But maybe no, no, no. No, no, it was Sword? I don't know. No. I think oh. Project Atlas might have been it, but I'm Pro not... That was the project code name, yes. Yeah. But there was a code name for each of the characters as well that we oh, okay. There was. Yeah, I, I yeah, didn't know that. I don't remember what the code name was. Huh. But, but I didn't really know until I was, like, kind of, like, just doing it, so... Right. So that's how... Yeah. I didn't get any side of tips. Yeah, here we go. This this was Fortune's earl, uh, earlier design. It, the, you know, probably the biggest yeah. change being that webbing in, in the front. On her arms too, actually. I yeah, think. the front, the pants, right? Like, uh, you know, we kind of changed the sort of the seams and stuff. Um, but this was this was the like this was the very first sort of final model that we had for the game. This was the one that uh, established sort of what the visual style was going to be for characters. Uh, you know, what the quality bar was going to be. Um, this was the one where we all kind of first saw it the first time. We're like, oh, we see it. That's what that's what one of our characters looks like now. And. Uh, mm -hmm. It was it was really cool once she uh, she came online. Cause up to that point, everything we'd sort of been animating and put in were just like uh, they're just like just sort of like Barbie doll versions of a character <laughs> that are just they're just meant to be generic. Here are the proportions. Um, you can you know animate your your motion to it, um, which was kind of a fun test for us because take, um, you guys didn't take my body and just make just make it hers. I thought that's how you got the prototype. <laughs> We, we hide cameras in all the uh, acting booths, all the VO booths, and yeah, then you know, yeah, we steal it. Yeah. We, we, we own your image now, by the way. Sorry. It was in the contract. You signed it. I mean, I do live in a cyberpunk dystopia, yeah. so that, that totally fits. I always yep. say that Melody would be great at cosplaying her own character here. I think so. Oh, absolutely. You could, you could totally pull that off. Yeah. Absolutely. We're not that different. All I need is a bandana. <laughs> Um, oh, there's a colored version there. So oh, I think right. that's like the first one that you showed. Uh, yeah, it's like the all the text with on it. That's the color. Um, and yeah, these are. Oh, right, these are uh, from Powerhouse, and they're doing our, our 2D cutscenes. So was, yeah, yes. This is their model sheet. So this is what they do whenever they. Uh, before they start on a cinematic with a new character, they dry out a model sheet to say, you know, is this what the character looks like? Are these the right details on the outfits? When they sort of uh, simplify uh, some of the designs so that it can be uh, uh, more in line aesthetically over the whole, uh, you know, cinematic that they draw, uh, you know, calling out, like, what are the important bits uh, to make sure that we hit right. So. Okay. Uh, I think there's another character sheet. Oh, no, it's another. Yeah, another version of the high-res model there. Yeah. Yep. We um, so Melody, when you you know you were talking about project names and all of that, was there any so like even you know further into the project when you were signed on and stuff, were they like showing you the game ever, or are you just getting scripts and you know give, being given direction? Yeah, I didn't really see anything for a while. Mm. Um, I would say, I mean, I saw some like simple stuff, maybe like. A year in, would you say? I, 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 I it was about that before. much. Was that? Yeah, it was. It was about a year or so in, I think, before we started being able to bring stuff to show you guys. Yeah. So then, and th so then, and I was able to see what Fortune, you know, obviously looks like. So, you know, she'd always be there in the booth when I was in there to look at. And, and uh, I'm also being told that apparently Fortune Hunter was the code name for the character originally. Fortune Hunter. Okay. That's right. Fortune Hunter. Yes. Yes. Very, very much a code name, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Super code namey. Super code name. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but I didn't like see like when I saw the trailer, I was like, "Whoa, this is really freaking cool." So, but I didn't see much. Just, just kind of her and some right. stuff here and there, but but not a lot. I really had to use our imagination. Yeah, this was the promo image we actually used for promoting the stream today, but. Uh... This is fairly new art of Fortune. I feel like I hadn't seen this until like a month or so ago. Yeah. It was popping up like mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah, they'd done this for the reannounce. They, okay. uh, the you know, they had done one new version of sort of all the different characters. Right. Okay. Um, Melly, when you 
So usually when you get direction for, you know, a character or something like that, do you like have to like really strictly adhere to that or like maybe it's maybe it depends on the director or do they like kind of encourage you to like come up with your own take on the character? I mean, I think that um because we worked on it for so long, we really had fortune dialed in. Like okay. she was, we knew who she was pretty much. I think right off the bat, um, maybe like the first couple of sessions dialing, dialing her in on what her attitude, cause like she's super tough. So mm-hmm. I think sometimes, you know, just playing, I could sound like a little too sweet. And I think we'd always have to, um, direct me to stay tough. Mm, okay. Um, right. I mean, because she's pretty badass. I mean, she's no Disney. She's oh, no Disney princess. Totally, totally badass. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, but but I think once we got her in there, it was just it, I we it was pretty smooth sailing. I think our sessions went pretty smooth, and except if I like you know couldn't pronounce a word and then get into that hole, <laughs> thing, you know, get in your head and like can't can't get out of it, and then like for the rest of the session you have a lisp or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, there's there's been times where I've you know heard voice acting for a game or something, and it, like a, a word that does not come up very much is in the script, and like sometimes yeah. voice acting might mispronounce it, and I always wonder like, you know, is that just um, did the, the, did the director miss that too, or was it just like a um, we just have to move forward, we'll take that mispronunciation or whatever in the take or whatever. Depends on the word. Sometimes, sometimes okay. it. it, it if the character might mispronounce something, we'll actually keep it. Mm-hmm. If it's something that we honestly might not catch, or there's also just a lot of words out there that um, different areas, different right. uh, different countries will pronounce these things differently. Which is right. actually there was there was actually our, our biggest one was data. Mm. Was the, the data data was yeah. was okay. a, I eventually had to keep a. Uh, a script of which way does each of these characters say it? Because that word came up so often. <laughs> and it's one of those words that depending on, yeah, what region you're from is going to be a little bit different. So, Well, especially because Fortune is uh, Latin. And so, mm. you know, and like some things that she says in English are, are, are like too, too English, you know? Mm. Like she has a lot of slang. So we had to like slang some, slang some stuff up as we were going through it. Um but I do remember one word that we said a lot that uh, we got a kick out of, which was Uranus. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of Uranus in that game. There is yes. quite a and bit. And I'm like a 12-year-old little girl. Like, I couldn't stop laughing. It was a joke, but I was like, Uranus, oh, my God. Like, it's very silly, but... That was a memorable moment. Okay, that, that kind of loops around because I was going to ask you if there was, like, a favorite line you had in the game or any, like, memorable VO sessions. They were all memorable. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Fortune is, like, so fun. Um, right? But, yes. What's that? Yeah, for yep. sure. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even, like, the trailer, just, like, we've got some killing to do is ridiculous. Gee, that's, like, all her lines are like that. <laughs> when does she not have killing to do is really the question. Yeah. Or when she's talking to Glory. I always enjoy those. Oh, yeah. They're tight now. I dreamt about Glory for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and, and to uh, Re- I, I can't even Rex and Czar. Rex and Czar. Yes, like that. Um, there may indeed be some ball jokes. Maybe there are totally some ball, ball jokes. <laughs> yeah, there. There's a couple. There, a a couple. <laughs> oh, baby, she's she's always just like she's she talks so much shit to all the guys. Yeah. She's just like. Breaks them down. You, you do not want to mess with Fortune. Yeah. Not at all. Or, or date her because it's very dramatic. <laughs> well, you'd have to have Glory get you know would have to approve first. I mean, oh, absolutely, <laughs> of course. Um, Super early. Yeah. You should have a reality show. Yeah, these were actually <laughs> these were kind of one of the ones too where we we'd had that first piece that we yep. showed, um, and then uh, we said, well, let's. Like, we kind of dig it. Let's see where, if we went in a totally different direction with a lot of this stuff. And are there elements that we sort of like here that we can maybe pull back into into the other? So I think, actually, if you look at the one on the very far right where she's got the ponytail, you can actually see, like, the design of the top, the way it kind of has, like, the the like the piping in the front, and then it kind of comes out. That's actually really similar to sort of a shape that we use in her final design. Mm. Um, so even though... 
you look at those and go, ah, those don't look anything like her. You can see like little bits where we go, ooh, we like how, you know, some of the shapes that are formed in, in some of the uh, some of the clothing there that we took to the final version. And yeah. when we started doing these kind of draw overs, I guess, these were really rapid. We were turning mm -hmm. these around every uh, every day to be able to look at. This wasn't a prolonged process yeah. because we had to move really rapidly on tr trying to nail down the exact look we wanted. Um, we got a question from Mr. St. Godzilla in the chat uh, asking Melanie, how long does it take to record a single line of dialogue for your character? One single line? <laughs> yeah. Oh, like a week? No, <laughs> <laughs> a single line? I mean, I guess it depends on the line, but we, uh, we go through them pretty pretty quick we, we i don't know how many lines we do in like three or four hours but four I mean, hours tends to be somewhere around 200 is usually a good average to say okay. so there you go whoever's out there doing some math what let's do the math <laughs> it's four I hours say, i don't know a minute or two or you know depending on what the line is but okay. if it's more of a complex line i don't know a minute two minutes Okay. It's I'm four. really good, so, you know, it's fine. <laughs> is, four hours, is four hours usually how long the recording sessions are? They can be, yes. Okay. Yeah. Four hours That's is the like max. the max. Yeah. The max, okay. Unless there's a lot of shouting stuff, then we try to keep it down to two. Yeah. Right, there's actual, like, rules and stuff in place for voice actors, like, regarding, like, yelling and stuff, isn't there? Rules, ho uh, hopefully, at some point in place, but... The good developers, like we try to be, uh -huh. will adhere to that. Okay. And try, we we don't we don't want to kill the voice actors. We love you guys. <laughs> you guys are great, and we would love to continue to work with you. And we want the best stuff for the game. So it actually benefits everyone involved if we're not putting them through hell. Yeah, you guys have always with the with the shouting stuff. We've only done like two takes of each, and they're always at the end of the mm -hmm. session. And so it's fine, you know. They've, they've been pretty good to us that way. We're not screaming for four hours straight. We try. It's not in the booth. <laughs> I really like this design of fortune on the right. That was kind of interesting. Yeah, I think these were ones kind of similar to the, to the last ones mm -hmm. that we were looking at where we said, okay, well, how if you made your super, super pirate, like mm. less of the high tech, like way go pirate side. And uh, I think you kind of see some of those, especially like that first one, right? It's like yeah. way, and, and you know, it starts to be a little bit like one of the things that we were always trying to balance was, um, you know, we want them to look iconic, but we don't necessarily want it to look like they're wearing a costume all the time. Um, it, it shouldn't look like they went to the Halloween store and were like, I'm a sky pirate, and they, you know, found whatever <laughs> sky pirate you buy at, at, at Halloween. Um, so how do you take some elements that you kind of get that, that feeling and sensation of, of a pirate um, without, like, giving them a peg leg and <laughs> uh, a swashbuckling uh, Two eye patches. Jacket. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um... Okay, this is like the pretty much final here, it seems. Especially yep, yep. with Glory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was Glory finished the same time with Fortune? Was Glory <laughs> updated later on? Because it felt like Glory was updated. She came, yeah, she, Glory, yeah. yeah. Glory yeah. took a lot of additional effort to get yeah. Glory Just, working. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, boy. Oh, Ryan's having flashbacks. Like yeah. some history there. Yeah, Gl Glory is. Glory is interesting. I just want to apologize to all of our fantastic programmers for coming <laughs> up with the idea for Glory <laughs> because you, you guys deserve it for me having done that. But she's awesome yeah. and was, was worth it in the end. But, boy, Glory was a <laughs> uh, very interesting uh, thing to get working. I remember yeah. Glory changing a lot and, like, how it worked mechanically. <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah. I felt like every couple of weeks I'd get a new build and I was like, oh, Glory's different now. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Glory's not following me. Oh, Glory's finally following me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Glory won't <laughs> yeah. attach to my back. Oh, she's finally Glory. attaching. <laughs> Glory has no personality of her own to answer uh, Mega Freeman. Uh, Glory is basically just the AI drone, but Fortune kind of treats her like she's an actual pet. Yep. Yeah. So she'll, she'll talk to her and... You know, ask her advice and stuff like that. It's it's. I believe there's. She's yeah. like the only one that like she. She's the only one that Fortune trusts. Really. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I believe there is some dialogue with Fortune. I think telling Hollywood maybe that she does talk to Glory, but she won't say what she tells her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm still not going to tell you. <laughs> uh, I saw one of the questions in the chat was uh, from Rex Zender Czar. I'm terrible with reading. Uh, asking about a mocap shoot. Um, so mocap shoots, uh, they can range anywhere from uh, a day to a few days. Depends on uh, what it is we're shooting. Um, uh, much voice actors, we try and find like somebody that that we know sort of fits that personality of the character, um, and uh, and use them, you know, throughout the, the entirety of the of the project of well. So uh, our our primary actress for uh, Fortune was Maggie McDonald, um, who had been uh, previously worked with on uh, Saints Row, and uh, she's worked on a few of the other characters that we that we had here. Okay. And Fortune has some really fun animations too. Yeah, she's yeah. a blast. Yeah, oh, yeah. Her, her big personality thing, uh, one of the things we, we did early on with her is she's just very uh, kind of happy-go-lucky. Not not in an annoying, like, you know, oh my goodness, she's happy about everything sort of way, but in that, you know, she's very carefree and kind of goes with it, and it still has that tough attitude and that, you know, really wants to make sure that Legion gets their ass kicked, because that's what needs to happen. But yeah, just no, nothing overly serious for her was ever really on the docket. <laughs> right. No, she knows that she's going to end up on top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not really bad, but you know what I mean? She's it's, she, she's like, she's always going to beat everyone. And she's, yeah. good, she's not worried about anything. Well, she so, is yeah. the captain. I mean, she gets to lead everyone yeah. back in her own ship. Absolutely. So, so uh, I did mention, you know, we might see some things that happen while, the, you know, early in the game's <laughs> development that end up being a little goofy. Uh, this is... This bug happened, like, for a couple <laughs> days, I remember, where you, you bring up the screen with the squad loadout, and, like, all the agents are, like, overlapping each other, so we yep. have Shahrazad and Fortune merging into one being here. One pirate ninja. One, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, it's it, even it, pirate it, ninja. It is the pirate ninja. It is. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, looking at it, like, if you, if you squint your eyes a little bit, it's like, oh, yeah, it's just a new character, I think. Like, it almost works. <laughs> Mm, almost. 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 It, okay, maybe if you back up like another thirty feet, and then it's like, <laughs> and if I take my glasses off too, that's there it like, is. Okay. Okay. The sweet. internal struggle with this character. Yeah. yeah, it's you know the duality of her soul. She's a pirate, but she's also a ninja. The yin and yang. Um, Someone was just asking about, uh, I didn't see who it was, I apologize, uh, about dialogue, whether or not it's made up on the spot or pre-written. Uh, everything is... No, it is voice actors. We make everything up. Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> you make it all sound good. We just give you, uh, say something along this line. Now, most, yeah, of it, yeah, most of it's pre-written. Um, occasionally, while we're there, we'll change something if it's just not sounding right, or if we have an idea for something that... Uh, wasn't originally in the plan, we'll say, hey, can we get an alt take this way and try this out? Um, and sometimes those alt takes end up making it in. Sometimes we just stick with what was originally there, but we try to try to keep everything ready before we go so okay. we're not going crazy out there. Uh, another another uh, goofy thing. I'm not entirely sure what's actually happening in this shot, but... Uh, <laughs> what is happening here? Does she's looking know? at the camera. That's she's, that's she's not good. The camera. <laughs> oh, is she getting knocked back? I think it's like an in-air knockback. Okay, yeah. she's getting knocked uh, back, and she's just looking straight at the camera. Yeah. Then this was before we had like all the uh, facial animation in there, so she's right. just like totally chill with the fact <laughs> right. that she's getting like knocked back. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is okay. my life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is this still looks like it's pretty fairly early on because the UI is closer to being done, but like there's still a lot of the place the buildings. The textures. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is probably like and the golem still just like grayscale in the background. Yeah, this yeah. is like maybe a year ago. Oh, I didn't something. even notice the golem. There. <laughs> yeah, there's a golem back there. You guys there is. check there it is. out. Uh, okay. Woo. Yeah. So this is. <laughs> I think this is final design for Glory, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and you can see here where it was. Uh, you know, when we talked about the ultimate and how it would like shoot out. Uh, you know, all the different beams and stuff. Um, we had the model and was like, well, where would this thing come from? So you can see on the left side where they like popped off the top and like drew in like, oh, it could also have this top hat is what we called it. Comes up out of it. Okay. And then this is what the effect could look like as it's like whirring up to then start shooting out uh, electrical bolts. Right. Um, oh, right. This is concept Is it? This is concept art for her intro, for right? For 2D. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm curious because, you know, they're Melanie, when you had to do voice acting for, like, the 2D intros, were those intros already ready for you to, like, see before you did the voice acting, or did they, like, make those afterwards? Are they usually made afterwards? They're usually made afterwards. Okay. We, we may have had... 
like a pre-sketched out version, like a very storyboarded, okay, not great looking thing. That I, I don't remember if we had one for you to show you. You might have recorded it before we even had that. Yeah, I don't think I saw saw anything. Okay, but this here is uh, this is Fortune's uh, sky ship here. Yeah. So that's yeah. Uh, real quick, uh, yeah, there was a question. Uh, hey Jeff, are Hardtack and Fortune oh. BFFs? <laughs> they're 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 good friends, yeah. but uh, I wouldn't say BFFs. No. Yeah. Okay. There's someone there's someone else that uh, Fortune's a little closer with, but she kind of keeps that on the down low. Yeah. But they do have like the like the like she was a pirate, he was in the navy. They sort of have a little bit of that yes. like overlap understanding the fact that they're in franchise force with uh with Hollywood, who's like. Hollywood and like <laughs> doing off his Hollywood. own thing in his mm. own world. They kind of both have to put up with him together, and uh, so you kind of see that like, you know, look Bonding. at each other, head shake, eye roll thing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this actually is similar to question I was gonna ask in a little bit, but uh, from what I understand, voice actors usually you know working not with other voice actors at the same time. It's just like solo in a booth. But Melanie, have you ever? hung out or worked with the other voice actors who are working on AOM or any like well, in previous projects? Well, yeah, I, well, you know, when we like come into our sessions, we don't usually see who else is, is on the game. Mm -hmm. Um, unless we happen to run into them, but I did, but yeah, I worked with, um, a couple people, Robbie Damon on there. Okay. I'm, um, what's the name of his character again? So uh, he's the, um, the, we can say it right. Cause can I say it or no? I'm actually blanking which character that is I, I, at the moment, so... God. You can say the name. Okay, yeah, it's August Gaunt is his character name. Okay, so yeah. him, so yeah, we're working on, we're on something that actually we can't talk about, but it'll come out soon, a couple months we can talk about it. <laughs> and then, besides that, really, oh, well, actually, my fiancé was, played some incidentals where I, like, I think I might have killed him a couple times, so that... <laughs> <laughs> I think you might have, yes. Yeah, that saved us a couple months of therapy. We just we just did it in our <laughs> sessions. So. <laughs> um, but besides that, I mean, no, we I never we don't work with each other in the sessions. Mm -hmm. We're just kind of solo in there. Okay. Yeah, I, I was just I was also personally curious, like how often that happens. Just because I know, like, especially with games and, and anime and stuff like that, there is like a, a fairly big core of voice actors that you see a lot mm. um you know because they're they're in the union and all that so i always wonder if just like because of that a lot of them just voice actors that end up I meeting mean, up that way well when we were when you know we had a rap party which is incredible like i've mm. never been to a rap party for a video game in my life so i was like this is amazing it was so nice of them to do and then you then you see because there, there's so many people involved. You see like all your friends there, and you're like, "Oh, I didn't know you were on this game. I didn't know you were on this game." So I saw a lot of people I knew, but I didn't know till like three years in or whatever we were doing it for. <laughs> so but yeah, you see the same faces usually. I feel like you know if you're in it for a while and you're working, it's it's, it's not like a huge group of people. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you're you're in the same circles. Okay. So was this the first video game you did voice acting for then? No. Oh, it's not? Okay. Oh, because, okay, that, that was just the first like, rap party. All right. So, well, oh, no. I mean, I I mean, it's, I don't think it's very common. I mean, I've been to a couple other rap parties, but not like, it's not super common to have a big rap party for a video game. Okay. I don't know. I misunderstood it, then. I mean, just, what's that? I said I misunderstood what you said then. My bad. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. Yeah, this is my first job ever, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I know you've been in other stuff that wasn't just voice acting, like The Sopranos, yeah. right? I was in I was in the la very last episode and casting of The Sopranos. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That was, like, really, really early on, like, one, one of my maybe first, second or third job, but, yeah, I was in The Sopranos. Okay. Talk about slumming it right off the bat. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. First on set, I meet James Gandolfini. No big deal. <laughs> um, so yeah, Fortune's Pistols. Uh, trying to figure out again with with her guns. It was how high tech should they be? How much do we want it to be like? 
you know, she brought her own weapons or they have somebody at Mayhem who makes weapons, uh, having sort of a revolver uh, feel to it, like, a, you know, call like callbacks to like a, a pirate uh, little... Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't know what type of pistol. Flintlock pistol. Flintlock yeah. pistol, yep. Um, you can see little elements of that in there. Yeah. And um, we're going to go back to full screen briefly while I set up. Uh, we've got a couple of videos, and I believe maybe a, two more bits of concept art, actually. Um, yeah, we have... Well, one, we have some some pretty funny things, but we'll be, we'll be saving those for the end. Uh, but... We have, yeah, we have one. Let me see if we can find it here. That's the wrong thing. <laughs> um, so while I'm looking for that through all this concept art, um, Melly, what were the other projects that you worked on in the past and like stuff you've got in the future? You mean like um, video game stuff or just anything? Or uh, anything, but you know, including voice acting for games. Um, yeah, well, so I did, um, some, some work, uh -oh. and I was exuberant witness Whoa. on Hilo. Oh, okay. Um, and then I did, um, um, I was on, I don't know if it's out yet, For Honor, I don't think it's out yet. Yeah, For Honor. Uh, yeah, For Honor, yep. yep, that's out. Yeah, I did For Honor, I did Paragon, I did, they're working on a Spider-Man I don't even know if I'm allowed to talk about it, but I am, so there you go. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah, the, the, uh, they can tell me not to, so. Uh, Spider-Man game, I did Sunset Overdrive, um, and then some other stuff I can't talk about. But And then I've been actually doing a lot of animation, so. Okay. Like I said, I'm doing something that's coming out in August that um, is for Disney. And... Mm -hmm. um, then I did some stuff for Blaze and the Monster Machines. I don't know if you know that Nickelodeon show. It's like their most popular show. Oh. Anyway. Yeah. It's another Latin character. Oh, so, thanks. yeah. And, um, yeah, I just shot a pilot in uh, New Orleans on camera, though. And it's okay. out for the Sci Fi Channel. Cool. Nice. It's called The Kid. It's a horror kind of family drama, actually. Ooh. And, uh, uh yeah, they had to, like, age me from, like, my age now to, like, 70, and so that was really cool. You spend, like, three hours in makeup, and then they, like, and then I had to be dead, too, so they, like, cover me in blood. So that was super, super fun. I felt like I was doing a video game, but, like, in real life. Oh, man. Yeah, I've... I've and, uh, what's that? Oh, I was going to say I've heard that, get, like, old people makeup is, like... It's, like, horrible. Yeah. <laughs> like, it makes you really hot, right? Like, it makes you, like, it's, like, it's just, like, it must be yeah. awful to have all those layers on your face. Yeah, they put, it's, first of all, it takes, like, hours to do it, and then you're in it for, for forever. You just have, like, a layer on your skin. But it's oh. amazing. You, like, see what you're going to look like, which is very, very scary. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it's pretty cool experience. I mean, when else? I mean, like, my job is amazing. When else would I ever have the opportunity to do that? Right. So that um, was really cool. So, and, um, and yeah, I, I also have a web series. It's called The Maurizio Show, where I play my father, <laughs> uh -huh. who is an immigrant from Italy. And so that we has... I haven't done it in a while, but it's always ongoing and it's fun. You should check it out. It's hmm. pretty, it's pretty weird. Nice. Hmm. Um, this is the last thing uh, we we had to show before we jump into the game and you know mess around with fortune for a bit. Uh, this I don't know how old this is. This was like a early animation test for our CG trailer, wasn't it? Yeah, this was one of the things they did to kind of show us what they would what they would do if they yeah. were given the the characters. This was kind of like a. Kind of an art test too to determine what it was going to look like. Yeah, so they thing. took the model that we had given and then they kind of uh, made their changes and adjustments to it as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when we saw this, we we're all like, "Yeah, that's awesome!" Yeah. Uh, I'll play it again. It's pretty short. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think there. I remember there was some other fortune test thing too. With somewhere. her bouncing around. Yeah. 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 It was from that the same was, group. Yeah, that was more physical, but I think this one hit the tone of the game. Yeah. Really well. Uh, you know, so like fortune taking a selfie and like making the duck face. Yep. I don't doesn't fit her character, but like tonally, right? Like it's totally, 
it's totally there, right, as to the game. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen this either. Uh, really? Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I remember seeing this, like, pretty early after I started working here, going, like, that looks fucking rad. Yeah. Because, like, at that point, you know, I was playing the game, but everything was gray box and stuff. Yeah. So it's harder to visualize, like, what the game's going to look like. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we'll go back to full screen one more time, and then we will uh, set AOM up, and then, uh, yeah, we'll do a little bit of game. Sweet. playing the game. Um, Yeah, so again, uh, just to reiterate, if you didn't see the last time we played some AOM for a while, uh, this is still a, a game in development, so there might be some bugs or something that happened when we're doing this. We had one crash last time, but that's because we were playing a, a demo, and demos are a lot mm. more uh, prone to crashing, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> um, but yeah, we... Uh, whoa. That was weird, that echo. You hear huh. that? Yeah. Um, actually, could you reach to that speaker and turn the knob down just a tiny bit? Done. Thank you. Rad. Um, all right. So, uh, jumping into the game. All right. We got Fortune. Um, I guess who wants to start off explaining kind of what Fortune is all sure. about? Sure. Well, we've talked about Fortune as our high-tech pirate, so everything that went into her visually... Was, and uh, combat-wise, was built around that concept. And she has the dual energy pistols, and Glory kind of rides around on her back until she gets into a combat-ready stance, and that's when Glory's like, oh, it's time to do some shit. And Glory will come out, and at this point, Glory's like, there was nothing. So yeah. go back onto her back. If there was actual combat going on, then Glory would have stayed out and done her thing, mm -hmm. which we will see what her thing is as soon as we find some enemies yeah. to start fighting. Oh, um, there's also one thing I want to I want to bring up because some some people mentioned this from when we streamed the game last time. Uh, so again, we were playing the we were streaming the demo that we showed to press a few weeks prior, um, and some people noticed that the the ped density was pretty low. Uh, that's not the case in the final game. The, the demo itself had, I believe, just had the peds turned down lower mm -hmm. uh, as far as density. But also, uh, our peds spawn kind of based on how much extra performance is available in the CPU. So depending what you're playing the game on, there will be more or less peds. Um, so like, if you're playing a PS4 Pro compared to a PS4, there will be more peds. Um, I think there is like a, a actual limit well, yeah, there's obviously an actual limit to how many peds there can be, but yeah, that was that that issue was mainly just from the demo. Um, mm. We have a pretty decent amount of action nodes. Uh, oh, well, that person was doing; it. they were ordering something from that vending machine. But um, yeah, if we ever come across any of the cool action nodes, yeah, they're doing one right there. Oh yeah, yeah, he's up. Oh, never mind, Mike. Man, these people—they're yeah. ordering quick. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, if we if we ever see any real any really cool ones, we'll be yeah. sure to to take a look at them here. Before you get into too much combat, uh, some of the things that, where we really get to kind of focus on the fun personality stuff is is when they're out of combat, right? Because that's when you're watching them. So um, with all of the agents, we have uh, a few different fidgets where if you don't touch the controller, uh, right. they'll, they'll do some sort of personality things. And, uh, so we, we have it so that up to three people, up to three for each. And for fortunes, they're all some form of dancing. Um, and uh, right. the way we ended up getting a, a couple of them was that while we're at the mocap shoot, uh, sort of in between takes, uh, they'd start doing like a little dance while they're just kind of bored, just waiting for the next thing. <laughs> and we were like, oh, that was awesome. Do that, do that again. And, yeah. and, uh, and that's how we would, uh, we would do those. So... Uh, at some point here, she yeah. should start doing. Yes, yeah, yeah, so that was one. <laughs> that was one where she was just kind of like you know kicking her feet around and waiting, like whistling. Uh, too, and she, right? yeah, we've got her whistling. Yeah, um, as as kind of a fun thing of like, all right, come on, what are you, when are you gonna do something? Uh, so those are those are a lot of fun because uh, yeah. those ones we actually will focus. Same that was a, a compliment. You can taunt and uh, compliment. Um, every agent has the, their own unique taunt and compliment so that again we can focus on their personality and stuff so yeah. and those are player controlled you can activate yeah. those whenever you want yep yep and that was like the same with the jumps you guys did a lot of stuff on, on the way they do their their jump animation yeah their jumps are all again unique like for her you know it's it's how much uh how much personality and how showy they are so for yeah. her you know doing the uh 
the jump and then a spin and then, you know, the last one where she kicks her legs out and it's totally silly and ridiculous. Like, you know, she's a she's a high tech pirate. Like she's kind of a sky pirate. Yeah. Like she's totally at at ease being like agile and nimble and kind of showy uh, in the air. So. Oh, and I'm I'm sure you you want to comment on this because I every agent does this when you call your vehicle. Yeah. So when you when you call them uh, when they get in the vehicle, uh, you know, sure they could just like open up a door and get into it. That's but boring. Uh, we have teleportation technology, so they're just going to teleport into the car, and when they jump in, it's another moment where we go, well, how would they get in the car? So for her, she you know spins around and throws her hands out and sticks out her tongue. Um, uh, there was this awesome picture I found of Rihanna whenever I was looking for right. like facial expression reference <laughs> or, or like just kind of personality and how she'd stand. It was like Rihanna was my spirit animal for fortune. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, they all they all have kind of a fun way of how they get into the car. Yeah. All right. So we're we're going to an outpost. So there's there'll definitely be some enemies here. All right. So, so as I mentioned, she has the dual energy pistols. And these will actually heat up as you're firing, and you can notice on the reticle on the sides there, yeah, the longer you hold firing. down, the, the more you're going to, to build up. Now, it doesn't just enter a cooldown mode. Once they get overheated, they end up doing these huge, we, we initially called them like blunderbuss shots, again, feeding into the pirate theme with Fortune. And you're able to affect how fast they cool down, how much damage those big shots end up doing. They're actually explosive rounds, so they'll hit enemies around them. So that's pretty awesome. They also have their own unique melee attacks too. All right, she's also one of the the, the hacker. Characters she is a too. hacker character. Yeah. So on that hack that you just did, you were able to bypass doing the hack since she has that ability. Yeah, we'll actually we'll, we'll bring this up real quick, I suppose, because yeah, like every agent has their own abilities. So you know, you can see what you can look them up here if you ever want to know. But yeah, like the uh, master programmer. One yep. is the, what we were just talking about. Every agent has two of these specializations. They start off with one, right? Or do they... They start off with one, and then they yeah, will gain the other. They will gain the other through through progression. Um, I guess I should mention, so, you know, you can customize the loadout for each character. Uh, we are using a maxed-out character right now. Very maxed-out character. Very maxed-out. Because maxed she out. has <laughs> Legion Tech equipped. Yeah. Um, I guess I should mention, so... You may have seen this, uh, you may have even seen the background when we were driving around and stuff, but you can pick up uh, cores that are scattered all over the place that let you eventually, uh, you know, combine to one upgrade to get the, these extra, like, passive upgrades. Uh, so, yeah, we have all this stuff unlocked, so, like, she's really good right now. <laughs> she is super good at the moment. She, yeah. From a gameplay perspective, she's one of our glass cannons. She has yeah. a decent amount of shields, very little health, but she can deal tons and tons of fucking damage uh, with what she does and the way they're able to set her up to actually play with there are a couple different ways you can play with with fortune one is very heavily based on the back and forth between her and glory one focuses on shields and what her shield level is and her doing extra damage one way is for all the stunning that takes place this is more a playing around with glory right. to do extra damage she automatically does extra damage to enemies that are stunned and one thing that you'll notice while we're playing is that yeah. glory will send out, send out this stun bolt every now and then and stun an enemy and it kind of creates a, a target of opportunity uh, for for the player in that instance since she does extra damage to enemies that are stunned and a lot of her different abilities um, if you want to build her this way actually even increase the damage even more if she's shooting a stunned enemy one of the upgrades she can put on actually makes every single hit that she does a critical hit so there's a lot of different ways that you can play around with her right now uh, generally she's going to start with her cannonball but the ability you have on right now is one that puts down this giant field that will slow enemies and do damage over time to them if they stand in it. And that's a great team ability since we are a game about being able to swap agents around. That, that one allows you to put it down and then go in with somebody else that's really good at mopping up enemies or, or doing anything like, like that. Hard tack, maybe. Exactly. <laughs> <coughs> um, yeah, so as you, you noticed, I have Legion Attack equipped as well. This is, um, if we hop in here again. Uh, so, you know, he was talking about the gadgets. You know, we have three for, for specials. Uh, I was using the quicksand one just now. Um, 
But in each one, we've slotted in some Legion tech, and these are uh, these are things you get from from crafting materials, right? Crafting materials, yeah. and they're late game, so these are really pushing your character yeah. to the limits when you're wanting to up difficulty, make things difficult, but you know, get your character to a place where you're able to overcome very. Uh, very adverse situations. Yeah, so you would, you would pick up crafting materials, you go to the Ark, you create the Legion tech there, uh, and then you, you slot them into... They can be applied to any of the gadgets. Any of the right? gadgets, yep. Yeah. Um, so, like, for the quicksand one, I put on the Sitting Ducks one, so now stunned enemies always get extra crit damage. Yep, and that isn't even... damage. That, that's just always. Uh, that yeah, always. is a, a thing that just exists. It doesn't actually have to be when the the ability is out you're just going to do extra damage yeah um some of them like some of them are really obvious it's like if i put this on this it's like gonna be really fucking good um but yeah like you were talking about you know you can make a build that prioritizes using glory so like this one here uh the legion tech prioritizes tank troopers and stuns them longer which are bigger beefier enemies so if you want to like prioritize getting them out of the battle um this is Elite Tech, which does something different depending on each gadget is equipped to, each type of yep. gadget. So in this case, you're getting the um, overcharge duration is increased. Yeah. Um, is there a specific loadout you'd like me to do? Do you have one off the top of your head? Um, I, I tend to build her as a, a killing machine. Okay. So I will. I generally go with a Cannonball. Uh-huh. Um, and you're increasing the, the, the damage there with the Legion Tech equipped. Yep. Um, we have the Hot Shot Magazine on here. Um, the dead eye scope is where I generally go because it, critical hits do fifty percent more, and if you're always okay. doing critical hits, right? Um, if you had that one equipped to cannonball, mm -hmm. it would be a it, those double up, right? Right, and then on on here, um, generally uh, go down to this one. This just helps her if um, she is uh, you know you want to build around shields, but you actually put the more the merrier on here. Yeah. So if her shields are higher than 50, her weapon damage decreased by 15%. So killing machine. Yeah, it's just... Yes. When you get all this stuff, it's like stuff that just stacks on top of even more stuff. To yep. like. And as you guys can see there when he was going through those menus, we try to flavor the names of the different gadgets and <laughs> yeah. upgrades to them per character. So you saw a lot of very piratey sort of names going on. Okay, where are they all at? Get down here right now. Uh, I where the are. There, there's there's a couple. Well, I'll blow shit up while they can't get to me. That is usually works. <laughs> you need to raise your your legion alert level. Get some. some yeah, I'm actually breezing. Down. So uh, also oh, uh, <laughs> regarding uh, difficulty. Again, like this is a character that's basically completely maxed out. I haven't distributed all of her skill points, but she's still really high up there. Um, and also, this is set, currently set to one of our lower difficulty modes, of which well, you're we have... You're on four, aren't you? Whoa, traps. Uh, I, maybe <laughs> a little bit higher. If I were a much lower level character, that could have killed me. Um, yeah, I, I'm on like level five or six for difficulty okay. right now, maybe, and there's, what, 15 difficulty modes? Yes. Yeah, so... Oh, buff trooper. Get rid of that buff trooper. <coughs> the mayhem. They are jerks. Yeah, let's... Uh, if I if I have my um oh the pride oh, there's a pride, pride bot captain well here. this is fortune's mayhem ability and this puts glory into a mode where she is just going to stun everything and since we have equipped stuff that makes you do tons of damage to things that are stunned you are just going to yeah. kind of except for this instance when he has armor on yes <laughs> he does have armor. Um, yeah, we should also mention that uh, Fortune's really good for taking out enemies that have shields rather than armor. Um, it doesn't mean that she can't damage. She can't damage armor, armor but yeah, you except you for are, some some cases, there are some cases. Yeah, she can totally damage armor, but since you have a group of three, it's right. encouraged to switch yeah. to somebody that can actually take that out. And the agents will help you out with that. They'll let you know, hey, this is somebody that I can deal with. Yep. Now she she'll, she'll eat through shields all day long, like yep. you saw that blue bar just disappear. There we go. Another upgrade core, not like I need one for fortune right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's kind of like the very quick gist of what fortune is like. Um, I suppose we could uh, do a different loadout here. Maybe one based on glory? Yeah, we can, we can we can go kind of glory heavy here if we want to. Uh, what's the best? Um, quicksand maybe? Is that uh, quicksand is, is decent. Um, 
So if somebody's already stunned, you hit them, they're going to stay stunned for the entire duration of the the, the bubble. Mm -hmm. So that plays well with what what Glory does. Um, so that that one's pretty good for that. Now now powder keg is interesting. That but that's more if you're building a more survivable fortune because right. that's all about recharging your shields, getting getting stacks of fortify so that you can keep going. You're not going to do quite as much damage, but you're going to be able to stay out on the field with fortune a lot longer. Right. Which one do you prefer if it's if it's more glory centric? Uh, quicksand is is, quicksand? is pretty good for that. Okay. Um, and, and going into here, Captain's Orders, yep. she's going to stun more frequently um, with that, and you have the yeah. uh, glorious damage, so she's going to do damage while she is uh, doing those stuns. Um. In here, I, I actually probably, um, probably mm. think that, hmm, based on the stuff you have equipped, this is probably going to be the glory centri uh, centric boots. one. Yeah. Even though, I don't know, we, we, you'd have to see a tank trooper for it to, to right. actually work. Now, for people that don't know, the reason that this is really cool, tank troopers have a couple of abilities that are extremely powerful. It's very, uh, you want to get behind them to hit them. That's where they are weakest. So being able to stun them frequently allows Fortune to get into a position to where she can take them out. Right. Um, let's see. Too bad I cleared the notoriety level, so all the dudes are just fucking dead. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Is there anything else fortune-centric that you guys want to mention? I guess, well, one actually hasn't happened yet, but, uh, so these can happen during the open world, and, and you can speak to this specifically. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are uh, a lot of conversations that can just happen in the open world between characters. Yes. We, we wanted to make sure that, you know, I mean, being an agency and all these guys kind of knowing each other, working together, that, you know, of course there's going to be some sort of background stories or different things that they do in their downtime. And if you stand around long enough or sometimes if nothing's going on, you'll actually hear a conversation happen uh, between the agent you got there and one of the other agents or one of the base agents back at base right and they're at least to me maybe it's just because record they're kept there were constant recording sessions but it felt like every time i was playing the game there was a new one well i mean if you think about it there's there's a conversation with for every combination of a total of 20 different characters right so because it's not just the agents it's also base correct. agents right it's yeah. also it's also base agents uh, but it's, and in, including uh, the infamous uh, HR person um, uh -huh. back at back at in the arc. So yeah, it, it, there's so there's so many conversations. It's you'll you'll hear lots of different things out there. Yeah. Um, how long do you think? Maybe Melanie knows. I don't know. How long do you think you spent recording just stuff for those conversations? It's it's not. <laughs> Not as much as you'd think, actually. Really? Like, even though you had about... Well, I guess each person had 19 different conversations to record. I mean, they're, they're shorter conversations, and it probably was only about a grand total of 100 lines. Right. So, still, about two hours, maybe. Okay. Wow. That's way quicker than I thought it would be. Yeah. Because it just feels like so much... What See, oh wow! It's actually we're actually already getting around to five o'clock here. Are we really? Um, yeah, yeah, we are. Oh Four fifty-nine. Time flies. Uh, so I suppose uh, before we wrap things up, we should take a look at some of the goofy uh, bugs sure. <laughs> that have come up here. Um, I believe. Oh, we actually have uh, two videos from YouTube related to Fortune's animation, real quick too. Mm -hmm. The before and after. Oh yeah, we can yeah, look at yeah. that. Um, so go back to full screen while I set that up one more time. Um, so, it, Melanie, did did uh, you force Jeff to do, like, Friday impersonations when you had to talk back to the art? <laughs> <laughs> nope, but I'm going to now. Yes. Oh, don't give her ideas. <laughs> oh, man. He does a great Friday. His his uh, uh, British I impersonations are fantastic. I, I, I keep it very under wraps. <laughs> Actually, the other person... Yeah. Larry, uh, one of our audio guys who tends to go out to the recording sessions with me, he does a lot of the temp voice when we're uh, doing a new trailer or new animation of some sort. So a lot of times we'll bring stuff to show people that have him doing the different voices, and I'm sure he's sitting somewhere right now about to kill me for saying that. 
It's pretty fun. I would love to hear his fortune or anyone's fortune <clears throat> there right now. Would be great. Oh, oh man, I'm trying to think who we usually get for fortune. No. Oh, Larry would know. Hmm. Hold on. That's Why are you bad. finding that? Rosie Perez? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't work in the office, sadly. <laughs> oh, no. That's too bad. All right. So, uh, back to these videos here. I'll see if I can find out from Larry. Oh. Uh, yeah, so this was uh, whenever we were first starting, uh, trying to define, like, how what the visual quality was going to be. Uh, so this was just saying, hey, what if we made it with just a run and just a idle stand? Can we get away with just doing blends? Um, and uh, we were like, oh, no, that doesn't, that doesn't look good. <laughs> like, there's no weight to the character. Uh, you want to be able to see those transitions. Um, so that was kind of like our before. And then uh, uh, we did an after where here you see, like, we've got the transitions, the turn animations, the takeoffs. There's actually, like, some leaning that happens while you're running and turning. Uh, this also has, like, an additive head thing that's going on so that, like, as you're, as you're running around, uh, you'll see, like, the head sort of lead the action um, versus the, the rest of the body. Body so that you get kind of that that feeling of uh, not just character turning on a stick as much. Yeah. Um, but a lot of this was like because we have twelve characters. Uh, what are the like? What do we need to make it look good? But we can't do like a ton of animations like uh, like you might in other games because. Everything we do, we have to multiply by 12. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of our thing. It was like, hey, can we have new th this new thing? Well, that thing takes two days and then times 12. Probably not. But <laughs> maybe. Like, is it, is it important, right? So uh, yeah. this kind of shows that. And it also shows the old model moving around. It also shows the sweet, sweet cardboard box test level. Yeah. yeah. Shipping crate level. Yeah. <laughs> this, is an, this is an earlier one because I think this test level later on had a giant cube. Yeah. Floating cube. Yeah. 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 This is test one. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I believe we actually have some... Some Actually, if you can show the, the the next, just the screenshot, the facial one real quick. Uh, the the fortune front, yeah. Yep, yep. So this was, uh, we do uh, expression sheets for all the characters. Um, and uh, this was one where, again, like I mentioned with Rihanna, uh, it was like, you know what, when we try to come up with what is their anger face and disgust and all the, the <laughs> universal emotions, uh, it was always for me like looking at her and then the three at the bottom were once we have those uh, main uh, expressions up top, um, how quickly can we get some of these other expressions? So the one with her tongue out was the one that like inspired me to be like, I want to be able to do that. Uh, <laughs> as, as silly as it is to have a tongue sticking out. We have it. We have tongue tech. Yeah. I'm, I, when I like did the taunt or whatever that where she where she did that for yeah. the first time, I was like, "You could do that in a video game." Yeah, yeah. I expected in cutscenes, but in gameplay, for some reason, seeing that and also when she's whistling, seeing her cheeks pop yeah, out, yeah, it's like, "Whoa, dude!" Yeah, it was it was really fun, like sitting here and getting to focus on this stuff, uh, even if we don't use like, you know, like we never show her fear face fear face in game necessarily, but being able to like nail that stuff down does is is really great at figuring out who these characters are. And, yeah. And just a lot of fun. I, I believe there's one more thing. Oh yeah, this thing. Uh, yeah. So this, this is. Yeah, yes. this is what wow. we use. Uh, <laughs> this is what we use uh, in animation to make sure we're we're totally on point with uh, everything that's important to the character. So uh, like at the top, we've got uh, like who they are, and we show yeah. what their weapons are, and then we show what their uh, what their motivation is on Maslow's hierarchy. We show what type of music that they like to listen to. Yeah. Um, even though I hated reggaeton. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I would animate her, I would put on reggaeton, and it became this like fun yeah. ritual with it. I couldn't, I couldn't animate Fortune without reggaeton going because it just kind of has that that beat to it. Uh, that's that's a lot of fun. Did that um, get played during VO sessions? No. Oh. I wish. Yeah. <laughs> See, uh, we started doing it at mocap sessions where we would find like <laughs> what is their music, and then we would have it playing throughout uh, throughout the shoot. So that that was always a lot of fun where. You would see it too, in, in those little fidgets and actions, they would start to move or do a thing. It was like, yes, do do that. That's that's what we want. Um, we also have here like what their abilities are in the ring, uh, the yeah. triangles at the top, sort of show like their must have, their strength, their weakness, and a secret uh, in the middle. Uh, her traversal type is the air dash. The range is in the middle, which is short range. How lethal versus durable they are, and yeah. how much they use specials. And then at the bottom is our personality and ability and it we use that to kind of see like 
uh, you know, for her personality, she's way showy, which is at the, the bottom there on yeah. the left side, um, and a little bit more chaotic. So that's why, like, when we do uh, triple jumps, like, it totally works because we've established early on how showy and, and over the top she is. Uh, if we say, hey, when she jumps, she'd kick her legs out, uh, it shouldn't really shock anyone because everyone's already agreed, like, Yep, that's she would do that if we tried to have you know Rama do that, who's a lot more reserved. People yeah. would be like, I don't think that fits her her personality. Right. Um, so this is this has been really helpful for animation to make sure that we understand what design is is wanting us to communicate in writing, and especially when we're working like with uh, you know bringing somebody new to work on a character or outsourcers or anyone, we can just be like, this is sort of everything you need to know in a very clear, concise way yeah. uh, to, to hit them. So. The, um, are these still up, like, around the office? Because I remember, like, up, all of these oh, for each down character. at this point. Is yeah, I think down? these might have come down, but, yeah, okay. we, we make them for every single yep. character. And uh, yeah. they're not completely up to date. Like, we've, we've changed some abilities and some yeah. things around. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I feel like these were around, like, last summer, maybe, or something like that. And before. Yeah, and whenever before, an animator yeah. starts on a character, it's like, make sure you can fill this out. If you can't, okay. if you can't answer anything on here, find it, because... Parts of this are going to influence very much uh, the personality and what we're trying to communicate, making sure that we're consistent across everything. Okay. And to answer a previous question, it was uh, one of the people here at the office, Chelsea Chapman, is the one who temp voices Fortune for a lot of our uh, needs. Oh, really? I, I didn't know. Oh, no, go ahead. Sounds Colombian. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, as Colombian as uh, middle of Illinois can get sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was always wondering, I was always wondering who did temp vo stuff here because most time I could point it out, but there's a couple where I was like I don't know who that is. Uh -huh. I feel like I've seen most of everybody here. Um, but yeah, with that, uh, whoop. Well, don't look at that sweet metadata. <laughs> uh, we have bugs. Some bugs. Uh, before we go into the videos, uh, this is apparently. Fortune with hard tax animations? Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that would be... Oh, my God. Yep. Yeah, so we, we have it set up that any character can use any other character's animation. So uh, when we start a new character, uh, everyone originally <laughs> uh, pointed, like, just used Fortune because Fortune was the furthest ahead. Yeah. When it was like, okay, now design needs Hollywood to temp out. Hollywood just had all of Fortune's animations. Yep, when that's right. had all of Fortune's. Yeah. And it was... We knew a character really worked when... Uh, it looked like Fortune jumping and kicking her legs out to the side worked and looked good for her. <laughs> and then Hardtack would do it and you'd be like, that doesn't fit his personality at all. And you were like, all right, good. Like, it should only work for that one character. But in this case, yeah, this is uh, Fortune using Hardtacks. With an uh, invisible shotgun. With the invisible shotgun and, and playing his contempt face. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I, think there, <laughs> I believe there's one more. Oh, yeah, this sweet gif from really early on in the game's death. Yeah. That was when we used to play, uh, <laughs> during, during swaps, uh, we would play an animation where it was like, oh, this is a fun place where we can, like, the player isn't Jeez. touching them anymore, we can, like, focus on their personality, uh, and then the reality is, like, they're just gonna, like, walk off buildings, and, <laughs> and honestly, it just, it, like, we had animations in there for a long time, like, Hardtack would, like, uh, row off yep. using his harpoon, <laughs> Daisy would stand back and, like, smack people on the butt, yeah. Uh, like we we had animations there, and ultimately uh, it just felt better to uh, not have them play an animation. We have them play like this like squishy, bloopy yeah, thing. Feels that like feels better. Yeah, um, for feels, sure. It feels definitely better gameplay wise because yeah. it feels like you never lose control. Yep. Yeah, doing that. and it gives some weight I think to the swapping as well. Yeah, to like feel that like uh, like morphing out as the next person comes in. Um, I, like making sure that felt like a thing and not just like. Somebody walks away and somebody else jumps in. Uh, it just didn't feel quite as and, good. And and one thing with these two that we that we noticed was that the cool animations that we were doing would end up getting lost in all the gunplay yeah. and combat that was going mm -hmm. on anyway. Yep. Yeah. So it was drawing focus in two different places. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, because like this is again really early in the game's life. But is that red card? That is. That's that red is. card. 
He don't look like that anymore. That is not at all. It's a very old, old, That old, is old, super old, old red, red card. Yeah. It's, you know. He's actually even playing like a Hollywood animation where he's got like the gun up yeah. like oh, this. Yeah, as yeah. opposed to, you know, being more kind of aggressive. Yes, I mean, you know, yeah. we'll be having a stream for red card later, but like here's a totally little bit for different. him too. Yeah. Like really early red card. Yep. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, God. Like an awful legend. <laughs> and, or she'd also like walk into buildings. Like it was. Yeah. Yeah. It know, was to get that. Disappear into a wall. Yeah. That's one of those like <laughs> you could make it so that that whole system would work. But ultimately, like it didn't add anything as much as I would be like, oh, yeah, I get to just make an animation for as long as I want and focus on the acting and the personality. And it was like, it's not it's not worth it. So it, it was actually an instance where not having animation made it better. Yeah. And, You'll uh, never hear me say that ever again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Again, really early stuff from this yes. game from like two years ago or two and a half or something like that. I think this is uh, what? <laughs> enemies d taking cover, I think. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> taking cover. Yeah. And discoing, apparently. Yeah, that's that arm. Man. So you can see there essentially what's happening is like there's some it's it's playing the animation that probably isn't meant for it, uh, and like the bone orders were messed up. So you see like this like <laughs> twisty arm thing it was exported weird. It was using bad data uh, yeah. or data. Tell me which one which one does four data use? data. Uh, she uses data data. data? Okay. I believe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember this test level. Wow. But you can see there, too, that was before she had any of those transition animations going on. Oh, she's right. Just like, yeah, she's just, she's just running blending, and then... blending right into it. Yeah. Um, Man. Yeah. I believe the next one is... Oh, yeah, this is... I think this was when Peds first started coming into the game. <laughs> I don't see what the problem is. No, they're fine. <laughs> That's how people walk, right? Yeah. Uh, so there you can see, like... <laughs> Uh, where we start doing some like uh, people additive it. additive lean stuff going on, um, uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's there's uh, they have balloon physics. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Wow. Yeah, I remember when they were like this in the game for a tiny bit. Also, wow, really early city again. Yep. A yeah. little bit later, but <laughs> Naruto run. Pretty close. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Oh man! All our yeah, all of our animation programmers right now are just like <laughs> dying. Why would you ever show this? <laughs> I was given the video files. Yeah, and I love wow. me some bugs. Wow, they are they're man. Just, they're just not calling any of the animations. Like no, nope. they're just yeah. like they don't even recognize that animations could exist, and they're just like, this is all I am. Yeah, uh, and then I I feel like I saved the best for last. Okay, uh, what you got? Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, I remember this. This one's great. This one's great. So this was, uh, uh, this one had to do with the, uh, you know, every every uh, skeleton, right, is built in a certain Success. way from, like, hips out. And I think this was one where they, like, changed or messed up the bone order. So then, uh, so then ultimately what happened, right, is you've got, like, uh, like an arm that thinks it's playing a torso animation, so it's getting those like those values at it. It's just, I mean, it's great. I think it's, I think it's awesome. Uh, again, our animation programmers are like, what is, what is wrong with you? <laughs> but you, look at the look at the simulation on the hair. This yeah. guy to hanging out there doesn't that look great? Oh my god! Uh, I mean, it's still it's still just like totally bobbing around. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, I love if if you have the audio too, I love the audio with it. Uh, I had to like, cut it out because it's okay. like a copyrighted song. Okay, yeah, it was I like I forget what it's set to, but it's really I can't good. remember, but it is like it's like a, like it feels like office space or something where it's <laughs> uh, totally not the music I would have expected that guy to be listening to, and then he was like, I made a thing better. And it was like, yeah, it looks a lot better. <laughs> I like that her eye eyeballs are just completely yeah. on their own. Oh man. But yeah, that's the last of uh, what we got for Fortune today. Uh, we actually have more than an hour's worth. Yeah, we did. Man. Uh, but yeah, that's the, the first agent we're showing off of our, our 12. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be streaming every Thursday till the game launches in, in August, mid-August. So uh, yeah, if you want to see more of the agents or just want to see more of the behind-the-scenes stuff with that, or if you just really want to see... A model freaking the fuck out. We got that every <laughs> week, basically. 
Yeah. Uh, we stream every Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 Pacific, 22 GMT. Um, and I really want to thank everybody for being on here, especially Melanie. Thank you for being on. It's rad to have voice actors on. Thank you for having cool. me. That was fun. Thank Lots you, to live man. up to moving forward. <laughs> yeah. can, can you pull off that last animation that you just saw with the crazy body? Yeah, I mean, that was, was pretty good to me. Yeah. <laughs> You mean to say that was mo capped, right? Yeah, that Melanie was. Did that? Uh, no, that was. Yeah, that was. I, I'm sure Melanie could have could have given us that as well. Uh, <laughs> maybe I don't know. That would. I do a lot. Yeah. Oh man. But yeah, if you want to see more, uh, you can also follow us on social media. We are at AOM the Game on Twitter, AOM the Game on Facebook, and AOMthegame.com for our website. Um, if you want to see these streams or previous streams, because we did stream the game, the, the demo we made a few weeks ago for like a solid hour. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to see any of that stuff or any of these streams, uh, you can go to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash volition tube. And these streams generally go up every following Tuesday. Um, but also like they're just, the archives are like immediately up on Twitch too. So like if you just want to, if you came in late or something, like you just go back right now and check it out. Um, and yeah, thanks for being here, guys, and, and checking out our game. I'm really excited to finally be able to like talk about it for real, yes. and not just be like, yes. "We're working on, we're making game, a video game." Yeah, don't tell anybody. Um, but yeah, I'm Josh Stinson. Uh, I'm the video editor here at Volition, and today we also had Mike Jungluth, lead animator, Ryan McCabe, lead agent designer, Jeff Belowski, writer, and then over Skype we had. <laughs> Melanie Miniki, now Fortune. And, yeah, come back every week to see our stuff. Uh, we'll have the voice actor of each agent on, you know, unless something comes up. But, yeah, uh, just tune in, check our stuff out. Thanks for coming. We'll see you next week. See you later, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. See ya.